Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. We thank the Lord for another time this morning. And we've all um, um, given him praise in our prayers this morning. And for those who it's their afternoon, I know you've done that. Our Lord is to be exalted. We started yesterday at looking at the introduction to the masterclass for this year and for this season. And by the grace of Elohim, we were able to look into why, why are we doing it? The Bible says, study to show that self-approved. A work so man that needed started. not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we want to outline the curriculum from the ones I'll be taking. Uh, not all of them, but just to give an overview of all that is involved. And by the grace of the Lord, um, once we start the teaching, we can pick one or two, or at least do about three throughout the um, period. Amen. So we have in all we looked at, number one, we want to start from the foundation. It's very important to realize that... Um, what makes a building is how strong the foundation is. A house without a foundation just laid on bare ground will definitely fall. And a house with a strong and rigid foundation will take up more blocks and more stories and more levels and it will stand and last for years. We've seen houses and the structures are built in the 15th century, in the 14th century and they're still standing because there's the strong um, foundations. And we've also seen houses that were just built last year. And then the government says we're pulling it down because we could see one side of it has tilted. And what's the problem? Structural defect from where? Foundation. So the foundation is important for every Christian uh, for, to stand and to know where we're coming. And what are these foundational um, teachings one is where we come from how we emanate what is it all about us yeah we've been born and we've been doing our thing but one day came a rebirth on our lives and that is the salvation that Jesus had brought to us anyone who forgets about salvation anyone who forgets about repentance may go back to the world again but we need to remind ourselves that we are in the new world because there were things that we rejected, we stopped doing. There was a day of transformation. There was a day of rebirth. There was a day that we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Is it just a story? No, it is not. It's a definite experience. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the spiritual significant things that has happened in my life and I hear others and many innumerable who had given their life to Jesus about this. So brethren, when we were going to look at that, what is repentance? Because many people are in church and they are dwindling or going back and forth because they don't have this experience. And as we're going through it, please, if you have not had an encounter with our Lord Yeshua, Jesus, it will be an opportunity to please do it. It is life. Without it, the person will walk through this world and then end up in a, at a gate that they wouldn't have loved to. But unfortunately, anyone who refuses the love that Jesus had given to us, because it's all about accepting the love of Christ. It's all about accepting that. I said, Lord, thank you so much. I realize it and I'm doing it. Amen. So we thank the Lord for that and we give him praise. And after that, we are going to look at water baptism. So water baptism is not just taking people to um, the water and dip them and come in and clap. It's not a Christian um, ritual that has to be done because most people see it. Oh, have you done water baptism? Yay, hallelujah. As if water baptism takes us to um, the gates of heaven. Um, no, if you've not repented and you go to do water baptism, it's like you know, dipping a dirty cloth in the water without soap. There must be soap, amen. And you know what that would mean. So, um, we get it first and rejecting our sins 
putting all to the altar, asking the Lord to take them away and change our lives. Then in that new man, then we do the water baptism, signifying the death and the, signifying being buried with Christ in baptism. We resurrect with him in newness of life. And that reminds us that we are now a new creature. We've buried the old in baptism. We've resurrected with a new life. We're now new people. So the old things should not be said about us again. That's the significance. So we're going to look at why water baptism the significance of water baptism and the error around it so that we can know that because Satan is an expert in counterfeiting every good thing on earth. That's his job. So when he sees anything good, he will bring an alternative to offer people the right real error that's not scriptural. There's no way they are written in the Bible, but you could see that many people are practicing it today in their organizations called, you know, churches and, uh, um, you know, fellowships. So the truth will set us free. So please stay on the line as we go through and then, um, or you go on the YouTube channel and pick up and listen. And so many, there's so many to feed yourself on that innumerable you know, hundreds of um, videos. So please, we look at water baptism so that our foundation will be strong. And we say, oh, why are Christians not standing strong these days and they repent and they go back? It's because they were not properly taught. When you're properly taught the word of Elohim, it will make a huge difference in your Christian growth. Then we look at restitution. A lot of people say, oh, restitute what? am I restoring? That's an Old Testament teaching. We're going to see whether it's an Old Testament teaching or it carried on to the new. It's, we don't want Satan to accuse us. We don't want Satan to say, hello preacher, um, I can hear you, you are preaching very well, but that attitude belongs to me. That lifestyle is me. That dress belongs to me. That shoe you're wearing is mine. You just, everything about you belongs to me. So what are you talking about, Christ? Can you give me back what belongs to me? Then you can be free. We do not want anything to hold us back. Paul said, herein do I exercise myself to be void of offense towards God and towards man. And someone may ask and say, oh, but I thought at born again everything is gone. Yeah, they are gone, but they are physical things that we still be speaking as we're looking at them. There are physical things we've put in place. If you carry on, we not make for the new life. So the best thing is to do what? Put them away. Amen. So that they don't stand. For example, you've got you an idol worshipper and you've got all idolatrous things in your home. And you're now a new creature. Do you need to throw them? Give it back to Satan or you keep them? If you still keep those things, the, each time you walk, look around, you'll see them. And there are so many other things. We talk about that. The next thing is to ask the Lord to purify our heart. Make it pure. It's, it's a kind of growing in grace from one level to the other. One level to the other. Amen. Now we've come into the kingdom at repentance. We need to do the next step to help us know that we're fulfilling our righteousness. To remind us that we've been buried with him. We are, we are now resurrecting with brand new man and then we go back to says okay what are those things that were here brought in in my own life give them back restore back now my house is clean lord jesus clean me up amen is there any impurity i didn't know that there are things that would be lingering please lord circumcise the foreskin of my heart break the stony bit take all the stone pick and pick them and take them all. Give me a heart of flesh. Amen. The heart that will represent you. The heart that will carry you. For you're a holy God. And you've asked us to be holy. For you are holy. So we're going to look into that. Is quite an interesting bit. Every Christian. You know must desire and attain. To live a, Christ, a victorious Christian life. And then we carry on to look at the Holy Communion. Amen. Oh, wonderful teaching. Very brilliant. He says, as often as you do it. 
in remembrance of me. That's the significance of the New Testament. The old is gone. So we we start from the beginning, from the institution at uh, the night of the Passover. What happened? And then take it through to Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach, being our Passover lamb. How he sacrificed himself. And then we see how to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Um, we will put it on in silent so that um, that can do. If you don't mind, I can do that. Right. Okay. Let's carry on. Um, so we're going to look at Holy Communion, what it is and the significance. So Holy Communion is not just going to a corner shop or going to a, a grocery shop and buy bread and open it and everybody start eating. No, there's something it signifies. And if we're doing it the right way, we will remember. Because he says, do it in remembrance of me. So it's one of the things the church do as often as they can to remember our salvation, to remember the price Jesus paid, to remember what he had, the battle he fought for us, to remember the liberty he has given us in him, the love he showed us. The Bible says, greater love had no man than a man giving his life for his friends. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. So when we remember the cross, what Jesus did, and at the end of all the suffering, he said, it is finished. Hallelujah. What finished? My sins finished. Trials, pain, distress, anguish, sorrow, battle, all those things, fear, finished. He took them all away. Hallelujah. He took them all away. Hallelujah. So when we remember, we will not live in fear. When we remember, we will not live in disappointment. When we remember, we will live victoriously because Jesus has done it all. Amen. The significance of the Holy Communion. So please come as we eat that bread, as we drink that wine. There's so many things. And that will help us to stand strong. So that when temptation comes, trials comes, sicknesses comes, and then the troubles of this life comes, the cross will be in front of you. Say, so, mm, the price has been paid. Amen. The price has been paid. Do it in remembrance of me. And once we do that, we are going to look at the Holy Ghost baptism. But before we look at that, we will look at verse 1 of Acts chapter 2 because the church usually miss that verse and then go in straight and it's just written on one verse and a little bit on the second one if you miss it the Bible says there on the day of Pentecost they were all in one accord Amen the power of unity. Because he prayed for them in John chapter 17. He prayed for us. He says, not only for these, but for those who we hear, who we know me through their words, which is you and I today. They were in one accord. We're going to talk about the power of unity. A house that divides against itself shall not stand. Because we have all these um, wrong for yourself, do your own thing. How do you want everybody would see you doing, doing, doing? It's still about collective. Amen. Look at the five fingers and everyone, everyone of them, their root is in the palm and the palm goes onto the arm. So there's no way anyone will run and do my own thing. This one. So when they were in one accord, so we're going to look at the power of unity. Now, when we're looking at the power of unity, it's not about, oh, oh, the church is not united. I wish our prayer would be, Lord, make me an instrument of unity. Any Christian that understands unity will live according to the word and purpose and plan of God. Jesus says, as Father, as you and I are one, Amen. When he sent us to go, he says, when you go, go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
the three cold f- uh, um, uh, um, fold for cord cannot be easily broken. The power of unity. And it doesn't even matter, even as Christians, anywhere you are and you obey this principle, whether you're a Christian or not, it works. Look at the people of the world, all the mergers, or this big company merged with these, and then hospitals merged with that, and then they are coming together because they know the power of unity. Any Christian who do not understand the power of unity will not maximize their potentials. Not at all. So we're going to look at one accord, then go into the Holy Ghost baptism and get it right. It's all written there in the Bible. So somebody asked me a question yesterday and was telling me, oh, that we are taught when you are praying that there's the first level of the speaking in tongue you will get in. And once you have attained that first level, then you go into the second level. Wow. Errors being peddled everywhere. Those, where are those things written in the Bible? He's speaking in tongues. The Bible says there in chapter 2, people from different places, the Christians, the Medes, the Mesopotamia, and those of Syrian and Cyrene, all had them speak in their tongue. And what happened? They magnified, they glorified God because it was a miracle. And they asked themselves, are these not the Galileans we know? How come they speak? And the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God himself. We shouldn't limit it to only coming and speaking in tongues. No, that would be a blasphemy. We shouldn't do that experience. When the Holy Spirit comes in, in into us, he takes over. Jesus said, look, I am going. If I don't go, you will not have me coming to live in you. He says, when I go, the spirit of comfort will come into you. That's him coming to live in us, brethren. We should reference it. And that's why many Christians, we are not really getting there. Because we've not understood that this is God himself coming to reside in us. And he can reside in a dirty body. So trying to make it a man speaking in tongues, brethren, you can now see. Devil has really worked over time. We need to know. And we asked because he said, when I come in, I'll give you power. How many of us are looking for that power? Again, power to overcome sin, power to overcome temptation, power to overcome the demons, power to overcome principalities, power to overcome the world. The Lord will help us. Amen. So we are going to look at that and then we look at the Trinity three in one amen and see what is going on today when we have divisions in the christendom and people have not said to the beginning was well, satan tried to do what divide so i am of paul and i'm of Paulus. oh i'm a baptism i believe in baptism i believe in holiness or oh, i believe in people who are just denominating divisions so we're going to see the Trinity that when people now do not believe in this unity, what happened? That's the offshoot. And today we have many, 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 many Christians who do not even know that their struggle is because there is a root. There is something planted at the base of their Christian foundation that is erroneous. And they carried on. So they carried on ever learning and not coming to the knowledge of the truth. And all the divisions we are going to look at that so um we will um stop here this morning and we continue to have an overview of what we'll be covering shall we pray father we thank you this morning and we give you praise even just the introductions our eyes is like a light bulb are opened there is now a hunger and there is now a spot up you know heart to you know delve into the word father speak to us be with us through this um, um master class and um, season and session precious father and we do not just want to get for head knowledge we need a renewal a refreshing and a transformation in our lives in yeshua jesus name we pray amen
Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day about 10 30 a.m uk time and that's the same of nigerian time and you it's either apostle george monday to friday uh, to thursday pastor grace uh, friday to sunday and then in the evening of sunday we have two sessions from 5 30 to about six after six another one up to seven so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.